What is up guys, it's Mitch or Deity, and today I'm going to be making a very hard to make video. It is going to be covering gear from basically the start of the game into trying to push into later games. So what gear is good at the beginning, how to build, kind of build your characters, what gear to utilize on them, into getting into hunts and crafting, and then how to get like charms and resources for upgrading gear, what's the best ways to do that. So to start, I am on my alt account. You notice the energy is way overcapped because I don't play it as much as my main. But I needed to use this account so I could show off a little bit more things. But first off, when you're first starting Epic 7, say you just started and you're wondering what in the world is this gearing system. Epic 7 is a gear gotcha over a character gotcha. So you will end up getting all the characters if you play the game. If you play the game, every it's a game you have to play every day. But if you're playing every day... And you're not going to get all the characters fast, you, and you're going to be missing some Moonlight 5 characters, but overall, if you use your resources smartly and play the game properly, you will end up getting mostly all the characters. You won't really, if there's a character you want that's not a Moonlight 5, you're probably going to get it, either on their first release or later. So, first off to start, whenever you are first getting into the game, do not upgrade your gear too, too much that it gives you at first, because all of that gear is usually just bad. Um, anything below tier 71, I would say do not upgrade it very far. So you'll get some like tier 57 rings from Adventure's Path. Those aren't very good. You'll get like tier 40 gear from Adventure's Path. I wouldn't bother upgrading that either. So, or in tier 55, there's a tier 55 destruction site that you get from Adventure's Path. So Adventure's Path is going to be the list of quests right here on the right hand side of the screen. And you will be following these and you'll be doing them. Mine is gone sadly because I, uh, have already completed it. So the best set of gear you can get from this is going to be i believe at stage three it is whenever you promote a six star here you get this uh 75 tier 75 attack set so with the tier 75 attack set that's going to be one of the first sets of gear that you get that is really good going through the story you don't really need a ton of gear to clear it all uh they give you free spirit tiaria the character at stage two dash, it's in chapter two. It's very, very early in the game. And as you're completing the quest for free spirit tier, it gives you a tier 70 speed set set. You can upgrade that set quite a bit. That is going to probably be one of your main sets to clear the story with. So that set is fine. You will probably end up feeding that gear later because tier 70 gear cannot be reforged. And reforging is the biggest part of this game at the end of the game is making sure you have good gear, reforging the good gear and having well-built characters. So after you get that, you are also going to unlock an event up here. So if you go to your event tab, you're going to have the hunt challenge. So once you start these hunt challenges, I would very heavily push you to do Wyvern challenge first. Wyvern is going to be the easiest to get into. You're going to hear a lot of things about speed getting into this game. Speed is king. Speed is, speed is the set to farm. There are other hunts, obviously. There's Banshee, there's Golem. Golem, I still would not recommend farming. There's Cadiz. Cadiz takes a very high gear requirement, but you can farm that with Wyvern gear. So the thing with what I'm saying with going into Wyvern first, which there will be Wyvern 11 guides that you can look up, Wyvern 11 through 13. Once you get to Wyvern 11, that will be a later part of this video. But once you get to Wyvern, you can start getting that tier 85 gear upgrading it once it upgrades well then you can reforge it and then once you have that reforge gear you'll be able to push into other parts of the content of this game this game takes a pretty substantial amount of time to get to that point and then be able to start farming the other content at least easily so just keep that in mind this game is long grind but with the hunt expert challenge once you start this there is going to be two p sets of gear you get from this you're going to get this tier 75 hp per or hp set so health set isn't the most effective set, but the pieces in here are going to be usable on pretty much everything. I still use a lot of these pieces on my other characters for PvE content because the, the sub stats are good, the main stats are good, everything about this is good. This is going to end up being something you put on your characters to say um, tank Wyvern 13, except for the boots because you want HP% percent boots to tank Wyvern 13. But there's a second set of gear in here that is really good as well. And it is going to be this right here on the promotion part it is the attack percent or attack set. And the attack set's the same, tier 75. All the substats are beneficial. They did a really good job with these because these will help you push into the early hunts. So other than that, there will be a login bonus as well. You will get a free tier 75 attack percent or attack set from that. And you will get an HP percent from that or HP set from that. With the HP set, you want to upgrade those boots to max. It will be a HP percent boot 
with pretty good like bulky substats that is going to be used for your front tank for wyvern is the best way to try to get your wyvern team ready but honestly once you get that set i believe it's on day three um you can just upgrade all of that and put it on um say mott Morancy, the three star character she's usually a good wyvern 13 front tank you can put it on angelica she's a four star if you have her um, or one of those characters. Look up Wyvern 13 guides and figure out which character you have that they're using and use that character and put the health set on her. And that's gonna get you into it the fastest because pushing Wyvern 13 is where you're going to, or Wyvern 11 at least, is where you're gonna be able to start making true progress into this game. So there's a couple of the early sets you can get that are going to be beneficial. Now next, this is going to be a way to start getting some of the arena gear. So by doing arena, you get a currency in the game. And the arena gear currency, it's called conquest points. Conquest points can be used to do quite a bit of things in this game. You can buy charms with them, you can buy gear with them, and the gear is actually very, very helpful for newer players. Some of the gear I still use on some of my PvP characters. The only problem is that gear doesn't roll very high, um, and it starts with medium substats, so it's very hard to get that gear to be at a like high, high end, but it is very, very good for new players. So. Another way to get conquest points as an early player is you want to hurry and get your high command upgraded to where you can do war missions. By doing war missions, you're going to be able to get conquest points every couple of hours from the disp or from your dispatch missions. And that will make it to where you can quickly get enough conquest points to start buying some of this gear. So here's what the gear I'm talking about though. If you go down to conquest points, you can see there's this new gear. Whenever a new arena season starts, they release new gear. But the problem is it's expensive. It's 1200 that takes a long time to get. That takes a week to get. And this gear wouldn't be what I would push for right away. I would scroll down and as a set of gear has been out for a while and more arena seasons come, the gear gets discounted. So as you see, this is the first season gear. This gear, I would not touch. This is not worth it. As I said, tier 71 is usually the go-to or higher. And you want I would still stick with that pretty heavily. Um, don't waste a lot of resources on lower tiered gear. So the tier, as you see, hopefully is up in the left hand corner of the, the piece. But this piece, I haven't even bought this on my main account just because there's no point. This gear, I wouldn't use it in anything. But if you go down the attack percent, this is pretty good. The right side pieces are very, very good. This would be a good purchase for an early account. This would be a good purchase and this would be a good purchase. Right side gear from this is going to give you more benefit than left side gear. And the reason because or for that is because the percentages, you want to have that max percentage whenever you are um, trying to push into dealing more damage and all of that because almost every character in the game benefits from attack percent more than flat attack. So for a lot of your Wyvern units, at first you will be on attack percent boots. And that's just, you, you need to find ways to get attack percent boots. These are tier 88. So this versus the free 75 gear you get, you get an additional 5% attack out of it because of the tier difference. And this is the highest you can get. This will go to 65, I believe. So with that being at 65, you get a, a it, 5% is quite a bit of damage overall. And you need every little bit you can get when trying to push into this game. So necklaces, one huge mistake almost every new player makes that i see is attack percent is not for necklaces unless it has a speed subset honestly i would try if it, if a piece of gear has attack percent but has like crit damage crit chance subs you do not want that that is not it's not as good as you think it is the most efficient piece is crit chance but i'm going to tell you to go for crit damage on your necklaces crit damage necklaces make your builds much much easier to do Crit chance necklaces are hard because you have to have other pieces of gear that rolled super high crit damage to balance out the crit chance main stat. So if you are in late game and trying to do the most effective build possible, crit chance is where it's at. Early game, crit damage. Crit damage necklaces, not attack percent. Do not do flat attack. Do not do attack percent necklaces. They are not beneficial at all. The only reason to keep those is if it is rolling really high speed or if it has if it's attack percent with hp percent defense percent speed and it rolls very highly which i will talk about high rolls versus low rolls in a little bit but the rings you're going to want attack percent for your damage dealers or hp um, or defense for your um, tanks uh, effectiveness and effect resist are both usable but don't go for too many of those and i'm also going to say right now as you get later into the game the most important boot 
is going to be speed main stat boot. You only need a couple of boots that have attack percent, HP percent, and defense percent. Honestly, I don't know if you need any with defense percent, hardly, unless it has good subsets and rolls high. But this is going to be, you, I, you I maybe need like 10 attack percent boots in total if you have every character. So do not hard focus attack percent boots, hard focus speed main stat boots. So get that out of the way. I'm sure I'll talk on it again later. But as you're getting these pieces though, the speed set I would try to get pretty quickly. This piece is amazing. This piece is really good for your tanks. This piece is pretty solid as well. Uh, this piece is really good. I still use this piece on a lot of things. And then this piece can be okay. You're just praying that this rolls speed. If this rolls speed, you're doing very good. Um, but I would buy the cheapest ones first. If you need a third set, this set is pretty good as well. It can help set you up for a um, very, very high damage dealing character. The problem is, like I said, the substats aren't very, like, they aren't high rolled, but this has a potential to still do very good. This piece is really good. This piece is really good. So the thing with this is there are different sets, obviously, as you've seen. So as you see here, destruction set increases critical hit damage by 60%. This is the most effective set in the game for damage dealers. So speed set is still fantastic. Um, that is why I say to push Wyvern because Wyvern is easier than trying to farm Banshee. You will be able to farm Wyvern and Wyvern, you can farm more sets of gear for different characters than Banshee. The thing with Banshee is you're limited to counter set and destruction set. And then you have your two offsets of resist and I don't know what the other one is. Uh, lifesteal, lifesteal, not a whole lot of characters use, use that. So Wyvern, almost every character in this game can be put on speed set, and if the counter set is better, then you can adjust it later, but it's better to farm for something that more characters can essentially use than farm for something to try to get the absolute best character early, but if that's your only character, then you didn't make a lot of progress. So that's why I say focus Wyvern first, and then once you start getting these pieces, adjust your builds later. <clears throat> the immunity gear all of this gear is pretty solid but i would still at first start with this stuff um the 70 percent off because you're going to get the most value you get it cheaper the counter set stuff can be used it's not the best this is okay the ring and the necklace are both okay the boots are all right um but either way first off focus on the cheap sets so that's how you're going to make the most progress the fastest okay now we're going to talk a little bit about substats on gear so with substats on gear, I'm gonna to try to show you guys what good gear looks like. So for example, let's look at my Landy. So this is my Landy on my alt account. My I can move my face if you would like so that you can see the stats. So good pieces of gear. If you were building an offensive character or a um, say support character, some type of um, healing character, it's all gonna be different obviously. But the thing to remember real quick is with weapons, weapons cannot roll defensive subsets. They can roll HP, but they cannot roll deep, flat defense or defense, making swords pretty pretty easy. They're not super easy, but they are not as hard as helmets because there are two subsets you can't roll. Now helmets, helmets are the hardest left side piece of gear because helmets can roll everything but flat HP. So by having more different subsets that can be obtained, you're going to have a harder time getting the subsets that you want. Now, chests are the easiest. Chests cannot roll attack percent, flat attack, or flat defense. So you're missing out on three possible roll or three possible substats, meaning that the pull is diluted, I think, and uh, just gonna be easier overall. Now, with left side gear versus right side gear, right side gear is very, very hard. Right side gear is the hardest part of this game. Like I said, aim for crit damage. And then once you have crit damage, try to get proper substats. With crit damage, you're going to want crit chance, attack percent, speed on an offensive character. If it's an HP scaling damage dealer, you're going to want HP percent, crit chance, speed, defense percent. And there are different combos. Some characters need a little bit of attack with their bulk. Some characters don't. But as long as you are rolling a piece that has at least three out of four beneficial substats, you're probably going to be okay. Unless it rolls into the bad stat twice, which I will explain later. Now, the ring, rings are hard as well. Rings, most of the time, you're either gonna be doing attack percent, HP percent, or defense percent. Those are the main rings. Effect resist and effectness rings, you do need some of, but not as many. But those are important as well. Any effectiveness ring you need, though, generally, you're gonna want as much speed as possible or as much bulk as possible. 
And one thing to remember with all of this is whenever you're rolling gear, keep any gear that rolls highly. If it rolls highly, you can make some things happen with that gear because you can roll all these substats on this piece and it can roll 25 speed, just say. But then you already have your speed covered, for example. So on this piece, maybe you are going to have to take a piece that has a lot more crit chance because you need to fill in that gap. So even though one piece is rolling a certain way, you can, as long as it's high rolled, you can find a way to mix and match and make that piece work really well. So don't chase substats. If you have a piece that's rolling something that you don't need or don't aren't looking for, but it is high rolled, you want to keep it. Now boots. Boots, speed, main stat boots are the most important thing in this game. You need to get as many of these as possible. You do not need almost any other main stat boot. Flat defense boot, don't need. Uh, flat HP boot, you don't need any of them. HP percent, defense percent boots, you maybe want a total of five on your account. So I wouldn't even bother rolling them unless their substats are amazing. And then attack percent, you maybe need five to 10. And those are gonna be a lot of your PVE gear. But a lot of your attack percent boots are gonna come from the free gear you can get from say the conquest points I was talking about earlier. So you don't need a whole lot of attack percent boots either from this. So keep that in mind, speed will be king for main stat boots. And the reason for this is because you see you get 45 speed out of it. If a, a normal speed roll is worth four points. So with four points, or a normal max speed roll is four points. So this is essentially 11 rolls, right? Whereas a main stat boot with attack percent is only 65%. And a max roll for attack is eight. I have to reforge just nine, but it's eight. So 65 divided by eight is 8.1 or whatever. So you're getting eight rolls versus 11 rolls. That is a huge difference. So speed will always be the key because you cannot play this game with dirt slow characters or you will never get to take a turn. It is very, very important to have the speed. Even if your characters are super bulky, if you do not have at least a little speed on them, it's probably not gonna work out. Even on counter set, you are going to end up wanting speed main stat boots on a very large percent of your counter set characters. So just keep that in mind. The biggest takeaways are don't roll attack percent necklaces very often. You do not want them. If you're trying to do damage, crit chance, crit damage, crit damage more than uh, not. Now, uh, attack percent, flat attack rings are okay. It's There is a difference, but if the flat attack ring rolls really high, the difference can be negated by high rolls. So if it's a flat attack ring, but it's rolling speed especially, keep rolling it. Okay, so now let's show a defensive character. So what's a good defensive character we can show off real quick? So here's the HP scaling damage dealer. So here, here's the type of character that you're gonna be aiming for pieces that are HP focused instead of attack focused. This has this isn't the best APOC Ravi build. <laughs> I actually do not use APOC Ravi on this account really. As you see, it has quite a bit of attack percent rolls, which isn't the end of the world. There, uh, any HP scaling damage dealer will still deal damage with attack, but it's not as effective because the the purpose of HP scaling damage dealers is to survive and then do damage. So you want you don't really want this attack. You want as much HP as you can get on a unit like this. But there's just another example of some substat combination. So like this helmet would be perfect. You have your HP percent, your speed, your crit damage, your crit chance, which I will try to go better into stat combinations. But overall, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you're looking for a damage dealer, you're going to be wanting crit damage, crit chance, attack percent those types of things. And one thing that a lot of players make the mistake on is if you are trying to build PVP characters that have attack percent, you do not need effectiveness. Um, effectiveness is usually a dead stat, no matter what, unless you're building a support style character. So if you're trying to go attack percent, speed, crit damage, and you have effectiveness, you that piece, if it rolls too much in effectiveness, it's probably worth throwing away, which I'm gonna roll a couple pieces of gear and try to give a showcase. But that's one mistake new players make quite a bit is they think if you have a debuff then you need effectiveness so say rb has blind you don't need you you do not need effectiveness to land this blind as you see effectiveness and effectors are both set as zero but the innate normal effectiveness chance to hit is 85 there's always a 15 ch percent chance to get um resisted no matter what even if you have a billion effectiveness the enemy can still resist it 15 percent of the time just as an innate game mechanic but if you want to dodge a character like Arby, say you don't want to have the blind landed on you, you would have to build 100 effect resist. 
That does not happen on any damage dealing character. You do not get that effect resist, meaning that your damage dealing characters to land their debuffs will not need effectiveness. If you are fighting an RB versus a Spectre Tenebria, your RB will always blind Spectre Tenebria unless you get 15% in. It's just, it's going to happen. So do not feel the need to build effectiveness on your damage dealing characters that have, say, Politus can stun um, if she has Abyssal Crown or like these debuffs, decrease that chance, unable to be buffed. You do not have to build the effectiveness to land those on anything, except for if you're trying to land it on say, a Soul Weaver that has effect resist built in, then that's the only case scenario, but you, you would never try that anyway, because what is blind gonna do to a Deanne or a Amelia? It's not gonna do anything. So here's an example of more of a tank focused character. So Mediator Kalric is a cleansing character. He, uh, he's one of the better characters in the game. He kind of falls in and out of being super effective in PvP, but he'll always have his place because he is, he's just one of the best cleansers in the game. He gives attack buff and he gives immunity. So he's, he's fantastic, but this is an example of a character that would use right side uh, HP percent gear. So by putting out as much bulk as possible, this character is very, very annoying to kill while providing support to your team. So the longer he's alive, the more beneficial he's going to be to your team. So you just build him as tanky as possible, but you still want that speed, as I was saying earlier, because you want him to rotate, take turns, and continually get back into his skills. If you were to build a Meteor Kalric at 140 speed with 35,000 HP, he would never get to take his turn. He would never do anything, and he would never cycle back into his skills. So that is one important thing of this game. It's a turn-based game. The more turns you take versus your opponent, you're probably going to be in an advantageous uh, position, unless the unless you're trying a very bold like cleave strategy where you're trying to win in the first turn. If the opponent survives and you continue taking turns, you're probably gonna end up hitting into units that have counter and will end up uh, killing your own team. But most of the time, if you find that balance of medium speed with good bulk, that is the build you're gonna want, which most of you don't need to worry about that too much for now. Um, I don't have any Soul Weavers built on this account, actually. <laughs> it's funny. Oh no, I have DJ Basar. So here's an example of a Soul Weaver. This DJ Basar is pretty fast, but you're going to be focusing on a, you, you would most, you would want an effect resist ring on him. That would be good. So here also, this is a flat HP ring, but it rolled speed. So the only time it's worth keeping like flat HP, flat defense pieces, except for boots. Boots are never worth it because you'd rather have speed main stat. But if you have a flat HP or flat defense ring or necklace, if it rolls high speed, it's worth keeping. So keep that in mind. But this is the kind of character you see this has a little bit of bulk has a lot of speed because he's a character that is going to cleanse push your team up and everything that you could possibly need from a support character so those are different styles of builds so from here i'm going to go ahead i'm going to do a couple of crafts and kind of showcase what to look for so once you get your kind of figured out and get some of those pieces i said you're going to start working on your wyvern 11 team and once you get to wyvern 11 you're going to farm and get some hunting materials hunting materials will then be used to craft and I will, that, that's what I'll be showing next. Okay, so I'm gonna go over just a couple quick crafting things to try to be able to show you how to spot good gear. So once you farm up, you'll get the resources of best straight claws. As I'm saying, this is a pretty much Wyvern focused guide. Other people will say maybe farming Banshee's okay, but I, I still think Wyvern is going to be your best bet as I've explained earlier in the video. So getting into this, you're gonna go ahead and, you're gonna go ahead and craft which, whatever you can. I would try to save up quite a bit before you go into craft. So, Looking at this gear, let's go into the different tiers. So blue gear is never worth upgrading. I used to say with blue gear, you could roll it for speed. So say this is speed set and it has speed substat. If you roll blue gear, the first two rolls will go into one of the two stats, meaning that it was a very easy way to get some, say 12 speed, maybe 14 speed pieces of gear. But 14 speed, it's not worth it when you're missing out on two full rolls. Whereas purple gear, as you see, starts with three rolls. Um, your fourth roll on purple gear will go to the fourth substat. So you are essentially losing one roll over red gear, correct? So with that in mind though, if you're rolling a piece of purple gear and you get low rolls, which I will show the rolls, the min max rolls here in a second. If you get low rolls on it, say that you get a minimum roll into crit chance twice. This piece is now technically a blue piece of gear because you lost out on its full potential, meaning that that piece of gear would already just be not worth using. And that is one thing to keep in mind and not, try not to upgrade pieces too high. 
always upgrade a piece that has good substats to say either plus three or plus six and see how your first roll goes. If the piece starts with decently high substats and rolls decent, then you should keep going. But if it starts with medium substats and low rolls, just throw it away. Just remember this game is going to take you quite a while to get to a point with good gear. But as you see up here in the corner, a red piece of gear starts with four pieces or four substats. And this is actually a perfect substat piece of gear for a soul weaver character or a tanky character, for example. So with this, four speed is good. A 4% health roll is a minimum roll, but since swords cannot roll defense, um, def flat defense or defense percent, HP, flat HP is your best alternative substat to that for a Soul Weaver character. So this piece is essentially perfect with uh, the effect rest. The only problem is a low health roll. So that is one good piece of gear. But whenever you're upgrading a piece of gear like this, let's go ahead and, and let's upgrade it. You see, we go to plus six red pieces of gear with speed i would always take the plus six so here is a good point to just realize what it is so hp percent is better than flat hp on every character as a substat some main stat hp per, or flat hp is better than hp percent on it's it's very few characters it's like maybe three or four i think but on this character well three or four characters i'd use it on um this stat is usually the one you want to avoid though and since that just went into it twice, this piece of gear just basically demoted itself to a purple piece of gear. Now, let's say that you're a new account and you need some pieces like this to finish up a Soul Weaver build. You can plus 15 this gear. It's going to take a lot of resources and this piece of gear will end up probably being trashed later. But if you need a piece of gear and it's looking like this in your early game, you can go ahead and keep rolling it. I am not because I am past that point. But as long as your four substats are the substats that you are looking for if you're pretty early game without a ton of gear just go for it i would honestly say if you try too much to get perfect gear you will never get characters geared it, or it's not that you'll never but it'll take a much longer time and your just account progression will be slow because you don't have to have perfect gear to clear content you don't even have to have perfect gear to be high high tier um like for the pvp and arena or rta you just need gear that is doing its job basically so there is some things called gear score, but I'm not even going to touch on gear score in this video because that is too much. So here we're going to look at just some of these substats. So here's an example of what I was saying earlier. This is an offensive sword as attack percent crit chance. Both these, that's a pretty high roll. This is a medium roll. Uh, crit chance can only three, four or five, but you have effectiveness here. So the problem with this, since you have effectiveness, you also have flat HP, which flat HP does not match with your offensive substats. So this piece of gear would not be worth rolling. Maybe if you are trying to do Wyvern early game and you need a splash of effectiveness on a piece, you can take the gamble, but the moment this roll rolls into flat HP, um, it's probably going to end up being not worth it. There are subset change stones that you can use for gear like this, but the problem with subset change stones is the more times a um, roll goes into that stat, the less effective it is. So the best subset change stone would be to use it if it has nothing rolled into it. So this is HP flat hp if you rolled it now you would get max if it rolled into this once and you try to change it you would, your effect would be halved so you're losing gear potential so trying to save a piece of gear that say if this rolled into health percent twice but it did attack and crit chance uh the rest of the time you try to change this to a crit damage to try to make it a good offensive sword that piece of gear is going to be demoted to nearly a blue piece of gear that got rolled perfectly because you're missing out on so many stats so do keep that in mind when rolling gear so the rest of the stuff attack percent effectiveness and speed whenever it's speed set or honestly whenever it's a piece of gear in your early game and it has speed it's almost always worth taking to plus three even if the substats are not perfect so this piece of gear has flat hp it's not really ideal it's, it's not a great looking piece but if you roll this and it rolls four speed and goes to seven at plus three roll it again if it goes to plus 10 or 11 roll it again but the moment it doesn't hit speed feed it into another piece of gear one thing early game two is you're not going to have a lot of charms. I'm going to show how to get some charms, but overall charms are the hardest thing to get in the game. Even as a late game player, you will be struggling with charms always. But one thing early game is getting the speed. So even like this piece of gear, it's starting with two speed, but this has potential to go all the way to 22 speed after reforge. So it's my, it's worth taking the risk, but only go to plus three if it has non um, good subset mixtures. The best subset mixtures they're pretty self-explanatory once you get them down 
but you're gonna want like a for swords i already explained i think i already explained most of that so if you are still questioning that i can kind of type out something in comments just let me know also discord you can get some help there but here is a piece of gear that is this is the ideal piece of gear for the current um game as a showcase so it has speed which is what you want it has flat hp not what you want but attack and crit damage these three stats go together fantastic so from there if you roll the piece of gear try to put it to plus six because it has speed red piece of gear with speed always plus six so both those that was a max speed roll but not a great crit damage roll but we dodged health if we were to hit health percent twice we would get rid of it no matter what but let's go ahead and go to plus nine see where it goes speed again so that is looking very good so if this hits speed one more time no matter what we're going plus 15. that's just the rule if you hit speed three times you have to go away so here it is this is perfect thank goodness this happened so with this piece of gear you have to make a decision on your account is it worth risking because if you go into flat health one more time this piece of gear is terrible not terrible but it's not you don't want this piece of gear because the attack percent is three off max the crit damage is five off max and the speed the speed's still solid though this could be a 17 speed piece of sword or sp speed sword so it's up to you as an early game player you'll have to make these decisions you will mess up don't feel bad if you mess up because even if this rolls in a flight hp again and you have no use for the sword you now have a sword you can feed into another sword so with this, that's a only if you feed a plus 15 sword into another sword, it's going to do like 80% of the max enhancement. And if you get a great, it'll just fully enhance the next piece of plus 15. So it's very expensive though, and is very cost inefficient for gold. But hopefully that's a good showcase. So change stones or change stones. Let me show one of those real quick. So you can modify your gear later. So this is not a very good piece of gear. Um, but this you can modify, as you see. And you'll have change stone. So this, see, this is uh, a base roll. So you're going to get two to four. But let's say we go to HP, which you can see HP was rolled into two times because that's a value of 14. Whenever you go to that, you're only getting four to six. So the max you can get is six for two, whereas the max you can get for one is four. So as you see, your, your effect is halved, which is very, very bad. Um, you do not, if you have to, you can make this work on pieces that roll in twice. But otherwise, it's it's pretty rough to try to change in, that's change in three times. But if you're a new player and you have that gear and you're using it and you can make it better, you can might as well use a change stone on it. But it's just, just know that that piece of gear is not near what it could be. So hopefully that kind of explains the upgrading process to an extent. It's, I'm sure there's so much more I can go over, but you guys hopefully by now can tell this game is complicated. So... From here, though, I want to show you the best ways to get charms. So charms are super annoying. Whenever you're upgrading gear, if you have the gold, then you want to upgrade your gear with other pieces of gear, which, like I said, it's not very cost efficient, but it will save you a lot of headache in the long run. So this is a speed piece. You upgrade to see if it hits speed, didn't hit speed. So you would take that and feed it into the next piece of gear. And then from there, that is how upgrading gear works and that's going to be most of the way you upgrade but when you do off chance have some charms then it is cheaper on your gold and it's it, i don't know it, it's a lot smoother but the only way to get charms in this game you can get them from the alchemist steeple so make sure to trade in every single week for this once you get to a point where you're 12 and 13 these are going to be your main upgrade materials so make sure you trade this in every every single week. That's going to be really big. Second, you have the option to trade your what conquest you points. So conquest points you can trade in for any charm that isn't ring or necklaces. So this really sucks to do because conquest points are annoying to get, especially early game, because you cannot do arena very effectively. So early game, I would not, I would try not to buy these as much as possible. Your early game conquest coins should be spent on these sets I showed at the beginning of the video. But this is a place where you can get them. Next up, um, one thing that is really good to do, you need what to you make think? sure you are doing Labyrinth. Always be doing Labyrinth. And as long as you're doing Labyrinth, you will be getting Ancient Coins. Ancient Coins are going to be used to buy your right side charms. This is super important early game. Always make sure to do Labyrinth because Labyrinth will 
just boosts the, your account progress severely. Labyrinth is very boring, it's annoying, but as long as you're going in, using your token, and burning up all your morale, you just get ancient coins for your fights. So every fight you finish, you're gonna get like between 10 and 20 ancient coins in, inside of there. So at the end of your run, you're gonna get like 200 per run, which is two charms, two charms a day, around about. You can upgrade or up that a little bit if you want, or have a higher morale team. Um, if you get some chests, you can get some better drops in there. But overall, that's going to be the second way to get charms. The third way to get charms is going to be just running stages. So as if you're running any type of story stage, charms can drop. It's not a ton, but charms will drop. So that is a way just doing regular stages. Next, you're gonna have your pets. So you'll have a hunt pet, specifically for doing hunts. On the hunt pet, the most important stat to get on your pet, stat, whatever it's called, is you want it to receive one additional lesser charm. This is so important, I would say this is better than every other ability on there. So if you can get a pet with the additional charm chance, get that pet. And then from there, it's going to make your life a lot easier because you will spend so much time in the hunts that this adds up tremendously over time. Okay, and there's a few other ways to get charms. I'll show two more. Automaton Tower. So with Automaton Tower, you are going to get quite a few charms from it. And you do not have to complete the highest level. If you are trying to do Automaton Tower and you are struggling to beat whatever floor you're on, just drop it one. Your rewards won't be as good, but you'll get the charms out of it. And that is so important. Just because you can't beat the high stage does not mean it's not worth it. Charms early game are key to progressing. So make sure you're doing Automaton Tower. The lowest one is fine. Level one, you can pretty much do with your Wyvern team. So it takes you, you can get a Wyvern team built in probably three days of playing a couple hours a day. And you can just go in and just clear this, get your charms, wait for it to reset and you're good to go. And then eventually you'll be able to do the higher levels. But the less you do the lower levels, the harder it's gonna be for you. All right, next up, you're gonna have Labyrinth. So within Labyrinth, oh, this is kind of annoying. There is going to be the Hoochie Shop within Labyrinth. So once you go into this, I cannot fully show it, but I'm going to explain it and hopefully it will help you. You will start, once you find Hoochie, which is the merchant, you will click on this. He is right here where my mouse is. You can do this on any labyrinth stage that you know where Hoochie is, but you will click, you'll go into it. You'll teleport to the thing closest to it. You'll go down, you'll go to his shop. You will buy out all the charms he has. If he has catalysts, those are worth buying too. And if he has bookmarks, buy the bookmarks. Um, it does cost a decent amount of gold, but I'll tell you about gold here in a second. So once you go there, go down, buy that. And then once you buy that, do not go to one of the stages to finish. You click up here in the upper right hand corner and you go to yield. Once you buy it and yield, it will be in your inventory and you do not burn your labyrinth ticket. So if you do that every day, you can get quite a few ch um, charms. Next up, there is also a stage and regular adventure you can go to. And this will, I'll show this because it will be... Um, It'll be the same as Hoochie, so it'll be a better representation, but... So, in the very early part, you go to Retania, and it's in Chapter 3. You get to this point within, like, two hours of playing the game. It's going to be Stage 3-4. And you're going to do the exact same thing I just showed you. You're going to just go in with whatever team, doesn't matter. And then from there, this one you have to walk, though, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> Turn on auto. So you'll go up here, there are no battles for this one. So then you'll go up and then this merchant right here. So you just pause, click him. You should have a charm or two so you can buy C and you can do this every day. And if you do this, stay on top of this every day, it's very beneficial. I got pretty lucky and got four charms today. That's not always the case. So, but once you buy, you write up in the right hand corner and you yield out so it doesn't burn your entrance currency. So it doesn't burn your stamina for that one. Okay, so that is going to be the most common places to get charms. Now, gold. Some of you guys do not understand the struggle we used to have in this game. Gold was a nightmare. They have given us a billion ways to get gold. Still a little bit of a struggle sometimes, but from gold, you are going to be just doing hunts. Your gold, whenever you're running low on gold and can't upgrade anything, you just have to go back and start farming hunt again or adventure or whatever. Or you can farm some spirit altars if there's character to work on. But overall, gold, your main source of gold is going to be just coming from hunts. So just keep that in mind. If you run low on gold, you're just going to have to stop upgrading. You're going to have to just take a, take a break, go back, get more resources. And you're going to feel like you're always in a cycle of you can't finish all your resources because you don't have enough gold. That's normal. Just expect that. 
So that is pretty much everything. Okay, so before we wrap up the end of this video, I am going to go ahead and show you guys the min-max rules for T85 gear. This is very important information. Um, I'm sorry I did not show this sooner in the video, but here is the min-max rules. So it's a little bit small. Maybe I can make it bigger. Hold on. Uh, font size 72. Okay, so I'm gonna go over this real quick. For min-max rules for tier 85 gear, like I said, do not put much effort into anything that is below tier 71. So all the T70 gear you get from Wyvern 11 when you first start farming, do not roll that. It's not worth it. It's just, I know it might have perfect substats, but you're not gonna get the value you want out of it. But your min max for your gear here. Four, to, four is a min roll, eight is a max roll, and it can go anywhere in between. And it's gonna be that for health, defense, effectiveness, and effect resist. So keep that in mind when you're upgrading a piece of gear. If it starts with 7% attack, goes to 11, goes to 15, goes to 19, you just lost out on a so much gear um, score out of that. That it's become, say if that was a red piece, it's become a purple piece, borderline blue piece. So keep, just make sure whenever you're rolling, if you're getting a lot of minerals, you need to probably stop on that piece of gear. Maybe not at first. Um, say you have a gear with perfect substats uh, and you need that gear to start clearing more content. You can keep going with it. It's going to be fine. It, but once you get later, you're going to kind of match this perfectly. Now your right side gear though, you can be a little pickier on right side gear. So you have a crit damage neck that starts with 6% attack and it goes to 10, then maybe 15, then maybe 19. That's, you're gonna end up using that piece of gear. Right side gear, you can be much less picky on because you need that right side gear. And that goes for all of these stats. So 48% for health, 48% for defense, effectiveness, effect resist. Now your crit damage goes from four to seven. Your crit chance goes from three to five and your speed goes from one to four. But if it's an epic piece or a red piece of gear, it, it can only go two to two to five, actually, sorry. Five is a super lucky roll. Like, a, I don't even know the odds, it's insane. But um, overall, just keep upgrading gear. Don't be too, too picky, but be somewhat picky and at least know what you're doing. So now with subset change stones, one real quick note. The most efficient stat to make sure you have on your piece of gear when doing your subset chain stone is your crit chance. So with crit chance, it's the only piece of subset chain stone for some reason that whenever you try to change it, you get less value than anything else. So if your piece of gear it already has crit chance and you're re-rolling for crit damage on another subset, say it had effect resist, you change it to crit damage, that's always going to be more beneficial. But if you have a piece that has attack percent speed, crit damage, and your last one's going to be crit chance, you're going to lose some effectiveness or some value out of it, but it's not a big deal. It's just 1%, which ends up being um, like 2% if you're looking at another stat. But overall, that is, it's a minute late game thing, but the more you understand about it, the better. So I wanted to go over that. But that's all I really have for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free to DM me on Discord. It might take me a little bit to get back to you, but I'm willing to help with whatever you need for trying to learn this game. This is the biggest, like, barrier for players a lot of players quit because they don't like the gearing system but if you like the grind and it's just for me the reason i like the game is the gearing system the gearing is hard it is rewarding to get a good piece of gear when you get that 20 speed piece of gear with good substats when you get above 20 speed when you get a 50 percent substat after reforge it is one of the best feelings and it's something that it happens it happens once a month once every two months in the game and it's just it's there's nothing that beats it in any video game for me and that's part of why i've stayed with this game for three four years now but it's been mitch or deity hopefully you guys got something out of this video i'm sorry it was so long but i will see you all hopefully in the next video